Erev Tov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live and got a very interesting broadcast tonight. Uh, I was looking at actually originally going back and recapping the events going on in Israel. We are going to kind of look at that a little bit tonight. But after viewing some of the news that's going on, I really began to discover some things that was very, very interesting to say the very least here. Headlines that we have on the screen and behind you here, Russia says operation to continue as long as Syria army carries out offensive. This is on TASS Russian news there. Uh, see the photograph there in the background there. It's another one of the bombs dropping there in the Syrian country there. And uh, it just continues right on. It's, it's a non-stop process, to say the very least, by Russia. And of course, to me, the whole reason behind all of this is for the oil. It is for the gas. It is everything is going on in this region is about that. And of course, the Vatican only wants Jerusalem for themselves. So therefore, Rome doesn't care who gets it as long as they get what they want. And I kind of think that all the players are working together, maybe. Uh, let's take a look at this here, though. The article says here uh, on November the 4th here, Russian aerospace forces will continue the operation as long as the Syrian army carries out its offensive against terrorists. A Russian Deputy Defense Minister Anatoly Anatova said on Wednesday, the operation is limited to the time frame of the offensive by the Syrian forces against terrorists. Anatov said in the meeting and of the Association of Southeastern Asian Nations. Defense ministers... Uh, in dialogue partners, Anatov reminded that Russia strikes with the use of the ships of the Caspian fl uh, flotilla against the targets of gunmen of the banned terrorist groups in Russia. The Islamic State and uh, Jabhat al-Nursa are absolutely in line with the international law. The operation is conducted at the request of the Syrian President Bash Bashar al-Assad. Uh, Russian military use of the aviation and other means only against the targets of terrorist groups in Syria. Anatova stressed no strikes are carried out against any other targets linked, for example, the units of the so-called moderate opposition, he said. Uh, they're giving way to the United States. I'm surprised, though, that they're not bombing them again. They, they did bomb them in the beginning, uh, to say the very least there. Now, keeping in mind the gas, the oil, everything, all this is involved here in the Middle East. One of the main reasons why I believe Russia is down here. You remember Russia back at the beginning of 2014 in January invited Mahmoud Abbas to Moscow, signed an agreement for the natural gas off the coast of Gaza as well as the oil drilling rights in the West Bank. This is a deal they've already signed. So Russia has a very vital interest in being in Syria to safeguard what they consider to be their claim to these, uh, these areas with the deal with Mahmoud Abbas. Now, keeping that in mind, we have a very interesting thing going on with Noble Energy. Noble Energy says they will decide on Israel's gas investment in one year. The announcement follows Prime Minister Netanyahu's promise to control economy ministry to fast-track framework deal between Noble uh, Israel's Delic Group. Of course, Israel's Delic Group is a conglomerate there, an oil giant for Israel, basically in the investment side of it. Now, Noble is a United States company. Now, it's kind of interesting, though, that they're actually talking about a one-year time frame. I'm wondering... Why would they think about a one-year time frame? Well, no doubt they're trying to secure the region. Because you remember, the United States was the one in there trying to topple Bashar al-Assad. There's oil fields in Syria as well. But the U.S. wanted to topple Bashar al-Assad in order to get control with a new regime, a new government in Syria, to where they can control all of the natural gas and oil revenues coming in and out of those countries as well as their in the Mediterranean off both shores of Israel and off the coast of Syria. And this is one of the reasons why there's so many different war ships and military planes and, and fighting over this whole region. It's because it's the last largest oil reserve next to that of in Alaska and, and different places the United States has up in the north that they've not allowed for drilling at. But this is one of the largest natural or gas reserves and oil fields left in the world. And the United States and Russia are fighting it out over who's really going to get control of all this. Well, 
Noble, though, has got some interesting surprises in here. We're going to go into that in a minute. Let's read a little bit more of the article. It says, Israeli gas platforms controlled by U.S. Israeli Energy Group, Noble and Delic, 15 miles west of Ashdod in the Mediterranean Sea, June 25th, 2015, Reuters, natural gas isn't just about Israel. Next stop for the gas deal, the Knesset Economics Committee. Israel's Delic Group may list on the London Stock Exchange. U.S., uh, according to Reuters, U.S. oil and gas producer Noble Energy Incorporated said on Monday it would make a final investment decision on two large gas fields in Israel in about a year's time, a day after the country's prime minister promised to fast-track the projects. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said on Sunday he would take control of the economy ministry after a minister who had been holding up the plan stepped down and give final approval to a framework deal with Noble and Israel's Delic Group. Yesterday's announcement from the Prime Minister's office is a further indication of the commitment to moving forward with gas development, Noble's Chief Executive David Stover said on post-earnings call on Monday. Shares of Noble, which cut its 2015 capital budget by $100 million and raised its sale volume forecast for the current quarter, rose nearly 8% to $38.56 a share in, morning, in the morning trading. Of course, now the Noble gas giant is located in Texas. And who would you think happens to be a stockholder in the company? Well, I haven't had a chance to research the Vatican as of yet on this because I know the Vatican definitely owns stock in some of the most powerful companies in the world. And they're actually one of the chief holders in stocks in many companies in the world. But in this case here, a very surprising detail I was able to find in doing some research on Noble Gas Giant there on one of their stockholders, and it explains to me exactly why a certain individual kind of sided up with Israel here recently. And guess what? None other than John Kerry himself. On the article here, this article here though was back in June, says Israeli media asked why John Kerry got involved in the natural gas dispute when he owns stock in a key player. Israeli media outlets on Thursday raised concern, and keep in mind it is an old article back in June of this year, raised concerns over why U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry offered his input on a natural gas dispute in Israel when he once owned stock in the Texas-based exploration company Noble Energy, one of the main players in a long-running regulatory saga. But information about Kerry's ownership of Noble Energy stock has been online for years since at least 2004 raising the question why the Israeli media focused on the issue Thursday, the praise day, the precise day Prime Minister Netanyahu's security cabinet was expected to allow Noble and the Israeli partner Delic to keep control of the Leviathan field, one of the largest offshore gas finds in years that had been put into question by antitrust regulators. So, anyway, kind of interesting to see that John Kerry has a very big investment in this, as well as his wife has some huge stock interest in companies that have interest in the West Bank. So it looks like John Kerry is playing both sides of the coin. Nonetheless, the United States has a major strategic interest or national interest, you might say, in the region as well, as far as Israel, the West Bank, Mahmoud Abbas. But the problem is, is Mahmoud Abbas signed a deal with Russia. So the United States is kind of forced to kind of help Israel out in this case here and bringing together some of their own allies to counter what Russia is doing in the Middle East so that they can get control of these areas as well. If not, if it falls completely in the hands of Russia, Russia gets Syria, then Russia also will get the West Bank, and then Russia will be behind, guess what? Hezbollah, Hamas, and all those that will attack Israel from the northern borders there and push the Jewish people out of the Golan and will take that area as well. Won't leave a whole lot of room left for who gets what's out there in the Mediterranean, especially if they push Israel back to pre-1967 borders. Well, yes, Israel will still have the field out there. Now, you know, so there's a little something that's interesting, and I can't say it's a prophetic insight on this because I just started looking at this when I come across uh, the passage is there and seeing the oil field is called Leviathan. But one thing that caught my eye is right here found in the book of Isaiah, chapter 27, verse 1. God says here, In that day the Lord with his sore and great and strong sword shall punish Leviathan, the piercing serpent, even Leviathan, that crooked serpent, and he shall slay the dragon that is in the sea. Could there be something there prophetically? 
in regards to the time we're living in and the oil field being itself named Leviathan, right there in the depths of the Mediterranean. Of course, every all the biblical history surrounds Israel. Leviathan definitely would have been a sea monster that lived there in the Mediterranean. So is there a connection? I'm not sure as of yet, but we'll look more into this a little bit later and just see if we do find out that type of a connection, to say the least. Anyway, citing documents found on on OpenSecrets.org, a website run by the Washington-based Nonpartisan Center of Responsive Politics. This is more about John Kerry's investment. The Israeli financial website uh, Calculus on Thursday pointed out that in 2013, asset declaration, Kerry held between $500 and $1,000 to $1 million plus dollars in noble energy stock. You don't think he has a major interest in what goes on there? Sure he does. It's not just a national interest, it's a personal interest as well. Good old Catholic boy he is. He definitely has his stocks all held together there. Uh, moving on, let's take also another big issue going on here, and this is just came out today. China warns the U.S. against further South China Sea patrols. You got to keep in mind, China and Russia has already got alliance and Russia is not backing down. I said to you in another broadcast just recently here how that Russia, if you'll notice, Vladimir Putin is like, a, he's, a, he's an excellent statesman. He's doing just like George W. Bush and George Bush Jr. there when they were both presidents making a case for a possible war in the near future with the United States, justifying all the evil deeds that the United States has done. He has called the U.S. an imperialistic nation going about trying to conquer the world with bases, military bases all over the globe, citing that Russia only has two military bases abroad. As Putin put it, he said, we have enough land of our own. We don't need any more. That kind of reminds me of that prophecy I shared with you a little bit back about how that, you know, they would actually come and want to take and grab the lands for themselves. Well, Maybe Putin doesn't fulfill that part of the prophecy. Maybe it is the United States. Maybe that does have something to do with Leviathan, that old dragon that's going to be destroyed in the sea. Could it possibly be a prophecy about the U.S. losing a battle on the ocean right there in the Mediterranean Sea between Russia? It's hard to say, but it's something worth looking at or even in the China Sea there. Let's take a look here. This here is the China's general here. Uh, Defense Minister Zheng uh, uh, Wang Kun, uh, on the, one of Reuters' photos right here on your screen here, China's defense minister has urged the U.S. not to threaten its sovereignty as well as a nation's security interest following last week's in incident involving a U.S. naval patrol in the South China Sea. The concerns were expressed by Chinese Defense Minister Zheng Wang Kun to U.S. Defense Secretary Ash Carter on Tuesday in Kuala Lumpur, where the uh, where the Associa Association of Southeastern Asian Nations Defense Chiefs meeting is taking place. Chang stressed that the U.S. should not pursue any other dangerous actions that threaten China's security interests. Last Tuesday, the U.S. Laysan passed through a 12-mile limit around Subi Reef in the Spratly Island uh, archipelago. The reef is, reef, reef is one of the seven that China has artificially reinforced to support its claim on the uh, archipelago and the sea around it. Uh, by the way, the photo we have here on the screen, if you're able to make it out, this is the ship sailing in that area. Now, the United States had already said they were going to sail within the 12 miles just to prove that they have that authority over China and that they have a right to sail in these waters. Uh, of course, these are armed China fighters. You may not be able to make out them. They're very small on the, on the screen there. Uh, they actually were armed uh, naval fighter jets over uh, contested islands after U.S. warship passed by. Beijing protested the U.S. Laysan mission in the South China Sea, accusing the U.S. of escalating tensions in the region. The actions of the U.S. warship have threatened China's sovereignty and the security interests jeopardizing the safety of personnel and facilities on the reefs and damaged regional peace and stability, the Chinese foreign ministry said in a statement. The U.S. replied to criticism by stating it would sail and fly wherever it wants in international waters and airspace. The U.S. is getting very blatant. I mean, you know, what's, what's kind of interesting to me, and I've, I've said many times before, I don't support communism whatsoever, but Putin basically is telling it just like it is. As Americans... Our country is an imperialistic nation. We do conquer countries everywhere we go. And we are trying to run the world. But who finances all of this? 
Is it the American taxpayer? Well, maybe this is why we are trillions of dollars in debt and have no way out. Who's going to buy the country out here when our economy collapses in America? And I know many people are concerned because Jonathan Kahn prophesied that, or predicted, I should say, maybe not a prophecy, but predicted that the economy would crash in September. And as of now, it's not collapsed, technically speaking, but yet the economy's been collapsed long before September ever came along. The economy was already collapsed. It's just being artificially kept alive. It's on life support, so to speak. But eventually, something's going to fold. And then the Vatican is going to be the great savior that they want to be and revive the world's economy with a one world order, one world religion, and a one world economic system. Speaking of which, too, speaking about the new world order there, one other little bit of news. I got a video, and maybe I can bring this up for you guys real quick there. A sister sent me a video, it was very alarming there, about vaccines. And on the video, we actually posted it on our Facebook page, those of you that may be there with us on Facebook. And let me just bring this out to you here. Let me kill the volume so we don't get any volume here. Uh, but she brought this video here. This is right here. And the question was being asked. It's a, about on July 29th. And the lady, is, it's a very blurry image here. I guess it was done by a, a telephone uh, uh, video footage and everything. But was asking about, the, uh, about uh, um, vaccines in the United States and that they would, you know, questioning that they're actually going to be forced. Well, Oklahoma, according to the man that's going to answer this lady, has already passed a law to force vaccinations. Listen to his response here. I'll try to bring it up for you. Everyone, everyone in Oklahoma will be vaccinated. It is a new law for them. Nor will you be able to really go anywhere without proof that you have had And you're going to have to have proof that you have been inoculated or vaccinated. Everyone is. And I'll just pause that there for now there. That, that's exactly what we had uh, heard before. There was a, a sister, I forget her name now, but... Uh, she had prophesied this and actually sent me an email personally about it, letting me know that, yes, Brother Steve, it's true. And she was looking by September 12th, they would actually enact these laws. It didn't happen exactly when she thought it would. But she said the time is going to come, starting from, I think, it's September 12th, it'll be harder and harder to travel because you will have to prove that you have been vaccinated. And this is exactly what the video was about here. This is going to become a global agenda, friends, a global agenda. It, you're going to be forced to be vaccinated. We're coming down. And of course, he does talk about that they, had, they got a, a, a truckload of bracelets that have ID chips in there that once they put that bracelet on you, there's no way to get it off. And that they're actually talking about doing this mandatory, that you will have to have it, whether you like it or not. So we are definitely coming to a time where you will not buy or sell. You will not travel. You will not do anything unless you take that mark. You know, I kind of think about how that Yeshua talked about it's better to live in the wilderness. You know, we may come to that time very near future, but that's what we have to do is live in the wilderness in order to get away from all the chaos. But we know that he will come and deliver his people. But I don't think it's going to be a rosy bed of flowers in the process. One other thing, let me just take you to real quick here. Another thing here in, in Israel, according to a Ruth Shiva uh, article that just came out, two Arab educators were dismissed for inciting, uh, uh, inciting against the IDF, violence actually against the IDF. Uh, the article says here two edu Arab educators from Jerusalem were fired in the past week over their classroom incitement against the Israeli military thanks to pressure from Education Minister Naf Naftali Bennett. One, uh, a teacher in an elementary school in the Arab neighborhood of Beit Han Hanin, Haninan, 
received a letter of dismissal on Wednesday while the school's principal was fired last weekend. On Tuesday's Educational Minister Director General Michael Cohen met with representatives from the Dar al Haman School's Board of Directors rebuking them for the educator's conduct and threatening to revoke the school's license should a similar issue arise. The representatives apologize and stress that they condemn the educator's actions. According to the Education Ministry's investigation into the Dar al Haman, Hama, the school recently held a performance in which the IDF soldier was depicted as violent and murderous as he shoots a Palestinian Arab child. Uh, the, the children were also observed by the ministry's officials singing songs of praise for waving pictures of terrorists who carried out murderous attacks against Israelis. Now, one thing I have to say, we do not condone the death of children. But unfortunately, in Israel, we have people that are under the age of 18, 14, 15, 16 years old, 17 years old, that are murdering people, period. And what do you do when you're faced with someone coming at you to, to, to stab and kill you. Um, I, I don't know if the Israelis have ever used uh, stun guns or not. Of course, I know stun guns can also be deadly as well, but that might be a way to deal with the youth. Uh, there may be a way to subdue them to where you can get the knife from them before they can harm someone else. Something that might be considered there. Also, one, uh, one last bit of news here. The UK, uh, this is an uh, uh, UK explosive may have caused Russian plane to crash or sorry, the UK reported this, an explosion may have caused a Russian plane to crash. It's the one that flew out of the Sinai, or that was, uh, came down in the Sinai Peninsula after flying out of Egypt there. And uh, also the Britain also has suspended all flights coming out of Egypt as well as of right now. But anyway, uh, Britain suggests Wednesday that the Russian airliner that crashed in Egypt Sinai Peninsula over the, over the weekend may well have been brought down by an explosive device. In a dramatic revelation regarding the crash, Islamic State has claimed responsibility, which we knew this from the beginning, they'd claimed responsibility. But at first, according to the cockpit recorder, the pilot had been, and from what the evidence they had, the pilot was saying they was having technical difficulties. Now, a small explosion could cause that as well, especially if it deals, if they put an explosive around the, uh, the, 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 the instrument or the, the, the hydraulic lines that control the, the elevators on the plane, which gives it the lift, et cetera, and causing it to crash to the earth. But anyway, it says that, uh, but as more information has come to light, we have become concerned that the plane may well have been brought down uh, by an explosive device, it added. As a uh, precautionary step, the British government decided to postpone uh, flights due to depart Sharm al-Sheikh for Britain on Wednesday, pending a security assessment by UK aviation experts en route to the Sinai. The, Brit the British approximation comes a day after the US intelligence official dismissed the possibility that a surface-to-air missile down the plane saying the idea is off the table. One U.S. official noted that the Washington's estimation what really down the plane was a flash or explosion over the Sinai and noted that the plane disintegrated at a very high altitude. Anyway, these are some very alarming stories. We also know that in the U.S. there has also been a stabbing attack in the United States. Still unclear exactly what happened. The, the attacker was shot by uh, U.S. police. Uh, I forget that was in California or exactly where it was. It was actually at a university there. Four people were stabbed. I don't think any of them have died from their wounds as of yet, uh, but we'll try to bring you more on that later. Anyway, I'm Stephen Benoon. You've been watching Israeli News Live. Thank you for watching tonight. And if this broadcast is a blessing to you, stand with us, support it. You can go to IsraeliNewsLive.org, right there where we run all of our prophetic news broadcasts and be a contributor here to help this prophetic news broadcasting. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Shalom and good evening.